Escape Double Dribble with ESPN NBA Basketball and NBA Shootout. Show us what you've got under your hood in Need for Speed Underground. And skate away with Tony Hawk Underground. Look out! It's game time! Please welcome two people even more immature than you, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. We, we are not immature. Pull my finger. No. Welcome to X-Play. Today's show features not one, but two of the biggest basketball titles coming out this year. And we're going to tell you which one is worth your money and which one you should skip at all costs. And on top of that, we have the latest Need for Speed title. Yes, and we send Adam here to investigate the use of performance-enhancing drugs in competitive gaming. Very deep stuff. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Well, we kick off the show with a review of the latest Tony Hawk game. The Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for the PS1 was really just the first major skateboarding game to make an impact in the industry. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, that perfected the trick system in the series. Yes, now the newest title, Tony Hawk's Underground, boasts a brand new edition of its own, a story mode you know and it's surprisingly good amazingly enough mm -hmm. here's a review of Tony Hawk's underground blessed is the fruit of thy loom what do Bon Jovi and Tony Hawk's underground have in common they both get started in Jersey man relax kid there are heroes from New Jersey Nothing's going right for a future skateboard champion here. He's got a crappy board. He ain't got no money. But I have like three bucks to my name. He ain't got no car. And if that's not enough, the world seems to be standing in his way as he progresses through the sinew searing progress needed to make it to pro skater doodum. Why you beaming? You want a date or something? Like all epic tales, however, he is aided in his quest by a mystic wise man. And I'll send you all the free gear you need for the event, dude. There's even some tear-tugging moments when pro skaters toss you a frickin' bone. Merry Christmas. A new set of wheels you'll find in this game is your feet. You can now hop off your board to fulfill objectives or discover new areas to skate. You've also developed the ability to drive cars this time around. The clunky controls, however, will hardly make it worth your while. Fear not, Hawk fans. The previously mentioned upgrades are just gravy to that all-familiar ample portion of skate meat. This game also seems to support a healthy respect for law and order. You'll move through various trials and tribulations with your skate rival and friend, Eric, who you slowly realize is only out for his own damn good. Well, uh, I mean, I sent mine for him, man. But relax. All the good in the game is out to help you. The only real bad guy is gravity and slow fingers on the controller for combos. Yo, I wonder what else we got around here. This game's even got a club you can go to. Maybe not. I got beat down for this. The music is a laundry list of new and old school indie classics, making skating through the game a pleasure to listen to. Who can forget this skateboarding classic? Brad. Uh, yeah. Can, can we move on? Online options add a great deal of value to this title, with board and gear customization to download. The game shines with great sound and visual transitions as you pull off some sick-looking beauty moves. With some recurring graphic glitches and clumsy car physics, we teeter on the edge of an invert. We give it a four out of five. Tony Hawk's Underground is available on all the consoles, but only the PS2 has online play. And now we turn things over to Adam for another installment of X-Play Investigates. Thank you, Morgan. Mm -hmm. When you think of video games, you think of innocence. You think of characters like Mario, Yoshi, and Jigglypuff. But there is another, a darker side to gaming. Not that dark. <laughs> Today, X-Play investigates the underbelly of professional gaming. <laughs> the world of professional gaming. 
can bring the competitors great rewards. Like these gamers in Dallas, Texas, playing for a grand prize of $150,000. There comes a time when their bodies can't give them any more. This is when some of them turn to performance-enhancing substances. I'm here with Greg. He's been brave enough to talk to us about his addiction. So, please, Greg, tell us about this substance uh, that you enjoy. Sometimes I have like two or three Red Bulls per gaming session just to keep up with the, uh, the, the other gamers. Uh, they're all doing it. Um, you know, I can't sleep. I, I don't want to sleep. Uh, why, why do I need to sleep? No one else is sleeping. I, give me that. No, well, I want it's it. for the give show. Why? I would like to stop that wild man. So, Sal, tell us your story. I'll frank anyone. I'll frank her, her, and her. Yes, but you're here to I'll talk. I'll frank you. You're here to talk about your problem. What problem? You consider this a problem? This is harder to find than Red Bull. Come on, you gotta. You gotta, you gotta check out. This is the, this is the, wait, this is what you need. This is what you need. It's got dimples all over it. It massages my hands, you know? Are you listening to me? Huh? While some are proud of their addiction, others are awash with shame. I'm joined here by just such a demoralized shell of a human being. Chris, tell me about your addiction well uh, Adam I started out getting nauseated uh, playing the games you know the motion it was uh, it was getting me sick it was tough looking at all that work just just going away it was humiliating I mean you you, you can't be a gamer and not be able to game uh, but then I then I found driving me and from then on, it was, it was just a spiraling, shameful, spiraling thing. I want to stop. But I do it for the games. Adam, I do it for the games. <sighs> Laszlo, you're a 14-year gaming veteran who's seen it all. Laszlo, welcome to the show. Well, Adam, thanks for having me. So, you've seen people affected by these performance-enhancing drugs. Well, I've seen it a thousand times, Adam. Burnouts, freakouts, overdoses. That's the sheer loss of potential that really kills me. I mean, these are good gamers. Crack gamers. In their prime. Guys with real skills. Sometimes it's... Look, I'm sorry. Just... Why? Why does it have to... <laughs> We've seen some terrible things today. Grief, horror, and intense addiction. I can't help but be haunted by these images of gaming gone too far. Thank you, Adam, for that compelling look into competitive gaming. How many guys did you make cry that day? Two, and I cried later. Okay, now as many of you know, EA Sports tends to dominate the world of sports games. Yeah. You got Madden, NHL 2004, Tiger Woods PGA Tour, the list goes on and on and a little more. All right, well, the one area where they tend to slip a little, those are the NBA basketball sims. Now, they do great arcade style basketball, NBA Street Volume 2, that's just one of the best games all around. But a lot of other developers are now trying to muscle in on the NBA sim turf. One of those developers, 989 Sports. Okay, and to be honest, where EA does almost everything right, with their sports titles, 989 tends to have some problems with theirs. Quite a few problems. Yeah. So, will their latest foray, NBA Shootout, be an exception? Well, here's our review of NBA Shootout 2004. Welcome to Oakland, California. After many long seasons, the NBA Shootout team has finally decided to get its Hoops franchise in game shape to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against competing basketball games. Robinson throws it down with authority. So, 
Does NBA Shootout 2004 measure up to the rest of this year's match? Dampier rejects it. Well, close, but not quite. What was he thinking? The game gives you the opportunity to get dunked on by the NBA's 50 all-time greatest players. Chamberlain, Bird, Magic, and of course, basketball's number one favorite, Great Nate Archibald. Yes, it looks like our friend Mike had other obligations this year, but who needs that old wizard when you can unlock David Robinson out of retirement and show the youngsters what it's all about? There you go, David. Davis sets the solid pick. Williams nails it. Shootout is probably the most accessible of the basketball games for the PlayStation 2. This is a blessing for some, but it also exposes its gameplay issues. For instance, it's far too easy to steal the ball. Rejects it. While the defense of artificial intelligence is quick to close gaps, it triple teams ball handlers without attempting a steal or a foul. These guys obviously have never played street ball. For the first time, Shootout actually looks like it was made specifically for the pixel-pushing prowess of the PlayStation 2 and not as a decent-looking PS1 game. Nails it! Don't get too excited there, big guy. Williams. Davis. Nails it! Visually, NBA Shootout shows it has some game. This is it. But not enough. The animation, while marginally passable, is a bit off in spots. While it doesn't interfere with the gameplay, there's no doubt the general flow of the game just doesn't seem as fluid as the competition. Davis falls away on the shot. Announcing his handle by Nets radio guy Ian Eagle. Abdul Rahim, the shot's away, off target. An NBA legend, Bill Walton. Shaking, baking, elevating, he went to the penthouse, everybody else got off on the second floor. Yeah, we recommend disabling the speech. Yeah. On a positive note, the squeaks of the shoes sound pretty realistic, don't they? Okay, I know I'm grasping at straws here. When the final whistle is blown, NBA Shootout 2004 proves to be the best in the series history. Of course, that's not saying much. No good. No X play gives it a two out of five. Big offensive board. Jameson cleans the defensive. There are way too many gameplay issues with NBA Shootout for us to recommend it to you. The passing isn't tight at all. It's just not pretty. It's not tight. It's not no. good. But don't worry. If you want to pick up a far superior NBA title, you should stick around because we have one for you after the break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming up, he shoots, he scores in ESPN NBA Basketball. I'm Adam Sessler, host of X-Play. As far as uh, using cheats in a game, back in the old days, it was almost essential if I wanted to see how a game like American McGee's Alice ended because it was just too difficult with those, those controls. Games are being made a lot better now, and you know what? I'm not cheating no more. Shoots, she scores. It's Adam Setzler and Morgan Webb. We're back and we have another basketball title for you. Now, with Jonathan is telling you why you may not want to buy NBA Shootout, now we'll tell you why you should buy ESPN NBA Basketball. Reason number one a new gameplay mode called 24 7. It's actually tied to your console system clock. Reason number two best post game ever. Here's a review of ESPN NBA Basketball. The following is a special presentation of ESPN. ESPN has managed to attach themselves to one hot little NBA basketball game. Right out of the gate, ESPN NBA basketball captures all the flash and glitz of the NBA. And at the same time, it manages to deliver the kind of deep gameplay that usually only shows up with a seasoned veteran. Perhaps that's because just underneath its surface beats the heart of Sega's NBA 2K4. This year's game features the exhibition, season, franchise, and online modes of play that you'd hope for, as well as a street battle and a dope new 24-7 mode, which may just be the superstar that overshadows the rest of its team. 24-7 is a standalone gameplay mode where you develop your own player through a series of challenges and competitions. It lets you treat your baller to a few tats. Now, I'm not sure why that's important, but I wanted to let you know nonetheless. I do love a virtual makeover. He is so pretty. Okay, so now you can start developing your skills on the court. Simply put, because 24-7 mode is tied into your system clock, can we show the clock? Thank you. 
since the different challenge settings are influenced by the time of day. It's a lot like having a basketball player as a virtual pet, except that this is actually fun. In fact, the 24-7 challenges are probably compelling enough to draw some gamers away from the included NBA modes altogether. But let's not get sidetracked. It's the Western Conference Playoffs Game 1. We're here at Given its simulation Memphis. style, Welcome ESPN NBA basketball, basketball is a lot like real basketball in that getting the ball to the hoop isn't always straightforward. The complex controls seem fairly responsive once you're up to speed, but at no point does the game turn into a casual distraction. ESPN NBA basketball introduces a new ISO motion control system. Ooh, big words. On the downside, though, I have a hell of a time hitting the free throws. Can't sink the first. Even in practice, the free throw button scheme proved to be a lesson in aggravation. Stupid control pad. Stupid. Aside from the potential fatigue and repetitive stress injury, this game might just earn the distinction as having the most unnecessarily difficult free throw system ever. Anyway, even with its flaws, ESPN NBA basketball offers a lot of bang for the buck. All combined, it adds up to a very good game. Due to its largely breakout star, the 24-7 mode, we're giving ESPN NBA basketball a dunking four out of five. 24-7 mode is kind of like having your own little basketball playing Tamagotchi. They were so cute. Yeah, those are the cutest basketball players ever. If you'd like to read our in-depth review of ESPN NBA Basketball, NBA Shootout, or any of the other games you've seen on today's show, check out our website. That's techtv.com slash xplay. And we'll be back with a need. A need for what? A need for speed. Ooh, I should have known that. Yeah. Uh. Coming up, rev your engines. It's Need for Speed Underground. Circle your wagons. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Yeah, I gotta get my wagon. Welcome back to X-Play. We have fast cars. Fast enough so we can drive away? No. We started with Tony Hawk's Underground, and we end today with the Need for Speed Underground. Now, the original Need for Speed game came out on the PC in 1995, and since then, EA has churned out several additions to the series. Uh, while the game still boasts time trials and the ability to customize your ride, the new installment also adds drift racing to the mix. Here's our preview of Need for Speed Underground. The Need for Speed franchise has been around for a while. They've always been fast, but the upcoming Need for Speed Underground is going to be rather furious, too. Clearly inspired, the upcoming game is borrowing a little from the Fast and the Furious sequel. I'm sure of it. Not only will you be racing against a bevy of hot imports, but the races are all set illegally, and you're not going to get very far until you learn how to master the nitrous. Houston, we have liftoff. While the Need for Speed Underground saga plays out in a sprawling urban landscape, the city itself will resemble no real metropolis in particular. Oh, hang on. Isn't that the old, um, yeah, the, no, never mind. Another thing you can count on is that you won't be getting up early for any of the races. Since the circuits are illegal, all of the driving in Need for Speed Underground is done in the wee hours of the morning. That means headlights only and a conspicuous absence of police cruisers. And you'd think there would be some special mayoral appointed task force after you, especially since the races are attracting a rowdy crowd of spastic hoodlums. Yep, this town needs a curfew. <laughs> The game will boast some 20 licensed tuner cars from the likes of Mitsubishi, Toyota, and Honda, to name just a few. There's going to be a tremendous amount of unlockable brake packages, powertrains, and other parts from top-name manufacturers. Most notably, though, are the various cosmetic upgrades. Customizing the look of your car will play an important role in many races because your overall score will be multiplied by your reputation. Word. Oh, yeah, I rock the sick ride, G. What up? The meat and potatoes racing will be the circuit courses. Additionally, you can find yourself competing in what's called a drift race. That's right, it's a virtual sideshow. Now, there are some drag races available too, but remember, these are street races, so crosstown traffic can be a worry. 
Yep, hope they're insured. Dubin Store is soon. Need for Speed Underground is shaping up to be the must-have racing title this holiday season. So you might want to send your letter to Santa, Priority Mail. And we have just enough time for viewer mail. Oh, crap. Today's email is from Zach W. in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Oh, I like that name. Yes, he writes, I heard there was a contest type thing where you submitted your coolest gaming clips. I was wondering if that was still on. I believe I have some truly unique and amazing ones. I'd like to share these with the world. Oh, that's sweet of him. <laughs> nice. Zach, you may not be able to share them with the world, but <laughs> you can share them with us and the X-Play audience. Yeah. Share your only reward will be the satisfaction of having your name and your footage broadcast in select cable markets, but hey, that's never held me back. That's huge. Okay, now if you have a game stunt where you exploit a flaw in the program or you capture naked gameplay, but not capturing gameplay naked, that's different. Or you do something oh. incredible and amazing, visit our website and find out how you can submit it to us. Now that's at techtv.com slash xplay. You probably say a little linky thing there. Yes. And, and, go click and, it and of course, on that. you know, just beating the game does not count. No, it doesn't. No, it's good to do. Good night.